Welcome to Emily vs. Art. This is why I stopped drawing for almost five years. While I'm talking, I will be adding notes to the screen about the art that's going on. Mostly I'm going to be talking about my artistic history and why I started and then stopped and then started doing art again. I grew up with my mom painting downstairs at a huge art table, one of those slanted things next to our wooden furnace and a glass of wine. I remember if I woke up late at night or couldn't fall asleep and I would go downstairs, I'd always find her there working on some massive realistic painting or an abstract piece, whatever it was. I really looked up to her. She was a biology teacher, so she was smart, and I ended up studying biology in college. She was creative. She was a volleyball and track coach, two sports that I became involved with when I got older. So it doesn't surprise me that very early on I wanted to do artistic things and draw and create characters. In fourth or fifth grade, we had one of those scholastic book fairs where we could all go and spend our allowance on overpriced books. And there were all sorts of things, including a red covered how to draw manga book by I think Katie Cooper. And even though now looking back, the art style isn't exactly what I would call great anime or manga, it got me going at the time. So I'm not gonna spend any time tearing down this person's art because that book was successful enough to be at my Scholastic Book Fair, so good for her. So once I found that, I started drawing anime and manga all the time, creating characters, creating stories in my head. In fourth grade, I think I created a kind of Lord of the Rings ripoff with a couple of other kids in my class, and I illustrated it while we all wrote it together. And also, I loved being teacher's pet in our class. Ms. Lin was this short, round woman who always wore scratchy wool cardigans, and she would give us hugs and she was so proud of one of my Van Gogh copies of sunflowers that we had all been asked to do and she loved mine so much she hung it up in the classroom for a while and I think my mom still has it and that sort of positive reinforcement was something that I wasn't really getting from my peers at the time I would have said at the time I was being bullied but in reality I was just a little weird a little more introverted and therefore I was overcompensating for my anxieties and the tough stuff that I was going through in other areas of my life and so I had very few close friends and so the positive reinforcement from my teachers and my parents were like, wow, she is smart and doing so well in her classes and she is creative and can do all this extra other stuff. That kind of fed me and kept me going despite being praised for being artistic and creative, I was never really given the impression that an artist was a valid career. Not in the sense that anyone discouraged it, it just wasn't brought up because every time I mentioned wanting to be a lawyer or a doctor or some other professional type with a graduate degree, I got great positive reinforcement there. So I knew 100% I wanted to be a doctor by the time I was in eighth or ninth grade. And around that time, I found an opportunity to go to a boarding school about six hours away from where I grew up. And so I moved there and it was a totally different experience. I was no longer top of my class. I was no longer super special. I was just one of many super special kids who had been gathered all into one place. It was intense. So I was there as a scholarship student and I was just from a very different background than most of my peers. I ended up focusing on preparing for college to become a pre-medical student studying biology. That was the plan. Even though I took basic drawing classes and then live figure drawing, and the teacher at my boarding school, Mr. Bradford, was so amazing. He encouraged me to think about applying my artistic skills in the medical field, such as drawing for anatomy textbooks. And that support meant a lot to me, and he was a great person Anyway, I drew and journaled every day. During class, in between class, at home, well, not at home, in my dorm. But it was stopped being about characters and imagination for imagination's sake. It was mostly angsty crap that was, you know, about me or my friends or my crushes. So I was drawing every day and creating almost every day and getting positive feedback from my teacher in the art program, but of course, 
I was entirely focused on a, getting a degree that would lead to a high paying career so I could pay off the debt that I was inevitably going to in, accrue in college. And so their art, again, just fell to the wayside. My senior year, I met my husband. At the time, he was a freshman at NYU, and he was studying English as a foreign student from Brazil. I met him through his roommate, who was a friend of mine from boarding school. He had lived all over the world, but he was born in Brazil, and his family is based there. I found him exotic and very cool. And so we dated for most of my senior year. And when it was time to make a decision about colleges, I knew that I didn't want to just be someone's girlfriend. And so again, I kind of sacrificed a potential support system, just like when I left for boarding school, leaving my family, I left a potential support system behind by choosing Boston University over NYU. That ended up being the best decision for medical opportunities. Boston has great medical centers and I had a great time there, but I missed out on perhaps avoiding some of the drama that came up later between me and my current husband. When I went to college though, I stopped drawing altogether, just stopped. There was no time for it anymore. In class, I was using laptops. There was no more notebooks to doodle in unless it was a lab notebook. I wanted to be focused. I didn't draw for nearly four or five years. I think maybe I doodled a couple times, but I didn't create a single project or composition that I was proud of for the entire time I was focused on getting into medical school to become a doctor. And so I just didn't do it. By my senior year, I was completely burned out. I had had two career experiences that had had a huge effect on me. For one, I worked with a doctor who had a, you know, between her and her husband, they had multi-million dollar practices uh, and could afford a fantastic home in, right in Boston. And yet her husband had gone to jail for tax evasion. And it showed me that a successful practice, a financially successful practice, did not guarantee happiness or satisfaction in life. I knew I could try to be the best doctor I could be, but I didn't know if I could be happy while doing it. And another experience in a research lab showed me that even if the research was inspiring and fantastic, it was full of tedium and grant applications and conferences and basically being a principal investigator's graduate student slave for three to six years at less than minimum wage. And I didn't see either of those being for me at the time. After getting all those student loan notices saying, oh, you're graduating soon, you're, those are gonna come due in six months. I just hated the idea of spending more money to become a doctor, especially if I wasn't sure I was gonna be happy with it. I nearly failed a nutrition class that should have been an easy A. It was just all kind of coming down around me. I broke up with my husband at the time and made a series of bad decisions. And I ended up graduating early to save money. It saved me about $9,000 in both loans and cash. And I found a job with a research company working more on the computer side rather than in the lab. And it was mind numbingly boring. Just, I was redacting documents for eight hours a day. And with my commute, which was about an hour each way, I was just miserable. I reconnected with João who had moved back to Brazil and decided, screw everything, I can't handle this anymore. I canceled my lease for the next year. I sold my car. I quit my job. I got a tutoring job that I could do online from anywhere in the world and moved to Brazil. And throughout all of this, I'm not drawing at all. There's, it's not even on my mind. And I got here to Brazil. It has taken three years to get a full residency and to get married due to my visa status. But now I am a full legal resident here in Brazil. And about a year ago, I started having more free time um, as I was able to reduce my hours at work. And I decided to start playing with Palmer clay, of all things, for stress relief. And then suddenly I was painting again and I loved it. I remember loving 
the idea of working with digital art way back when I was like 12 years old. I think my dad got me a anime studio version eight from like 2008, you know, to get me started, but I never bought or had used a tablet before. And so for Christmas this year, I decided to treat myself and I had spent about three months working traditionally with art and I had really established that I was interested in it and I wanted to continue with it. And so I purchased a Wacom tablet, pretty much the most basic version you could. And suddenly I'm here thinking that I can tell stories on YouTube. And my social anxiety makes me not want to put myself out there, but I think that I have some things to share. Future videos might include art therapy topics and a more detailed story about how I met my husband and decided to move to Brazil, what Brazil is like. And I want to share these stories while sharing my art because I've been really inspired by so many art YouTube channels who have used their creative energy for digital art in combination with this sort of desire to reach out to other people. And so here I am reaching out to other people, trying to share my story. I hope this explains a little bit about why I was so nervous to start this adventure on YouTube. I had no intention of starting a YouTube channel until about six months ago. Here's the finished painting from today if you've been following along. This is Nuru, a Starbound and Wargroove character from the Chucklefish studio who also did Stardew Valley. And so I have played all three of those games and loved all three of them. And I did a Wargroove fan art piece earlier and just could not get some of these characters out of my head. So I decided to make this for everybody and I thought it would make a good first video. So again, thanks for watching. This has been Emily vs. Art. Have a great one.